my name is Annie House. Welcome to my fun and easy tutorials where I teach you to make jewelry using top quality products. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to work with Lux Resin. We want to make sure we have everything laid out ahead of time so that you're not running around looking for missing parts or pieces. So I have my pendant tray all ready to go. Uh, the Glamour Seal is thoroughly dry and it's resting on its level surface. I have two mixing cups, two stir sticks. I also have a uh, toothpick here and I have my Lux Resin Part A and Part B. The first thing I, I need to do is take the heavier Part A, which is the resin, and I will pour to my fill line. These cups all have markings on them, so I will fill this cup to the halfway mark. And this resin does have a minimum requirement for the chemical reaction to take place. Now I've warmed the resin to about 85 degrees and this is important because Lux resin does tend to be a little bit thick but that adds to its versatility because it can be used to coat products and also to fill products. Once you have poured the resin, carefully mix it and this is the kind of mixing technique I prefer to use as opposed to around and around. This paddle style you want to mix from clear to cloudy if you can see this is cloudy. As I keep mixing I can stir the sides here carefully. I'm trying to avoid introducing any air into the mix which will show itself as bubbles either large or small. As you can see as I'm mixing this it doesn't take too long to start to turn clear and it's very important that you don't see any cloudiness in the mix. As I'm stirring I can see that it's becoming very clear and I don't have very many bubbles in there at all which is nice and I'm continuing to stir. This is a 50-50 mix so you can um, measure it by weight, equal amounts of weight, equal amounts of volume. What's important is that if you err on the side of caution you'll add maybe a little more hardener to the mix. It's never good to have extra resin. So you, if you want to add a little bit of extra hardener for a sense of insurance so you can be uh, more confident in your mix that it will harden then by all means do so. Okay I have a really clear mix right here if you can see that. What I do at this point is I want to avoid scraping the sides or the stir stick and the reason why is because the resin is heavier and if I scrape off any heavy resin that may have stuck to the stick, then I'm introducing an uneven mix, likewise for the sides of the cup. So I just want to pour that mix in to a clean cup, and I've thrown away the other stir stick, and I've thrown away that cup, and now I have a fresh stir stick and a fresh cup and a beautiful mix of resin right here. I do have a few bubbles from when I poured it, but those bubbles are bigger, which are easier to disperse. The, the resin will degas. Here I have my prepared pendant tray on a surface that makes it level and my mixed Lux resin. Using the, stir, the clean stir stick, I will take some of this resin and I will drop a few drops at a time and it doesn't take much to fill up these pendant trays and then I'll ease it around to the, the sides like this. 
I can also use a toothpick to get it. I'm just coaxing the resin to the sides. At this point, if I wanted to put small beads inside, little glass beads, or anything, you know, little metal bits, something else to add a little more character to the pendant tray, I can do so. Now I want to be sure I don't put too much resin in there because I don't want it to come over the sides. And because I've warmed my resin, it's going to be a little more fluid. If I allow the resin to cool, it'll be a little bit thicker, which will give a little more dome effect to the finished piece. There are a couple of things about the resin I'd like to mention right now. If I allow this to cure, I can come back and add a little more resin and that will give a higher dome to the piece. I have about an hour's work time with this resin. At about 45 minutes it's really pretty thick. The resin is self-leveling which means that if you have a lump on one side or if your piece is not balanced the resin will continue to flow because it wants to be level. It won't remain lumpy. Uh, you can also add a pigment to this resin mix if you wish. Uh, add pieces inside of the pendant tray. Um, it's also important to note that if you have pets or you have uh, a dusty environment or a fan blowing, you're going to want to cover this with a piece of Tupperware or other plastic ware and then just set it aside. You might want to, um, as if you're making a bunch of pieces, put them on a tray so that you can then carry the tray to another location and then cover the entire tray. I like to allow the pieces to sit for a little while and then I'll come back and check on them. Occasionally you'll find that there are some bubbles that that may have come about through make the mixing process and this is generally uh, something that you don't want in your finished piece. So what I do is I, I take a flame, I will turn it on and I will gently brush right over the top and that will pop all of those little bubbles. You don't want to hold the flame on for too long because it will end up scorching the top of the resin and that's also not attractive. But just allow them to rest. You've got, you know, a good 45 minutes to an hour to work with this resin. Come back after you've let it rest for a few minutes and then take your flame and just gently dust over the top and they'll all disappear. All of these products and links to other fun tutorials are available on my website at AnnieHouse.com.